All right, sports fans, <laughs> here we are. Is anyone here a sports fan? If you're a sports fan, let me know in the comments. Uh, we just had, like, uh, in Australia, we just had a big, like, the Matildas, the female sports ball team, won some big sports ball event. I don't even know. I'm guessing it's, like, rugby or football, like soccer. I don't, I don't know. Do I look like the kind of guy that is into sports? I'm here alone in my house, sitting in tracksuit pants, talking to you about pretending to be an average Joe in, a, in the future, <laughs> you know, like I'm not into sports ball. Anyway, hi, sports fans. Uh, look, I, I don't mind a bit of StarCraft, competitive StarCraft, you know what I mean? And I don't mind, um, uh, you know, a few other things. <laughs> Uh, at the moment, the big sports news that I'm like down with is uh, the Mortal Kombat scene was won by the kid from Holes, it, which sounds like the most random, like yeah, whatever. And then, but when you find out the clothing he was wearing, he was dressed up as Powerline from the Goofy movie. I'm like, what the heck is got? Like, what even universe do we live in? Aliens exist apparently in America. And uh, the kid from Holes cosplayed his power line and won Mortal Kombat tournament. Like, 2023 has just been buck wild from, you know, wall to wall. <laughs> what else can possibly happen? We're only two thirds of the way in, right? Uh, anyway, we're going to make our character. Uh, he is also not a sports fan, I'm guessing. Uh, and I just thought we'd walk through the process. Now, it's been a while since I've done this. As always, we're learning the rules. Learning the rules, learning the rules. Uh, before we start, you've been given the tools to be as detailed as you want when playing 5150. Use as many or as little of them as you want because it's your game, right? And that's the big thing with, um, you know, Ed's commentary, Ed Texeria's commentary is always like, um, I, I don't even know how I'm meant to say that. It's such a really, I don't know, can you see how it's spelt? I, I Ed, if you're watching, my man. Uh, yeah, hi. I just call him Texaria, but I, I'm sure that's wrong. That's got to be wrong, you know? <laughs> Ed, if you're watching, tell me, how do I say your surname? How's it pronounced? Um, but yeah, Ed is, like, he's really cool dude, all his stuff. He's, he's so casual on his videos, and it really inspires me to play. Like, often I, I look at these games like 40K or Grimdark, and I'm like, man... Like, I feel like I'm getting the rules wrong. And it's like, no, man, just play the game. Roll the dice. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Who cares? As long as you're having fun, right? Uh, this is how we do it, as he says. So, in this case, we want to be as detailed or not detailed as we want. Uh, defining characters. We're going to make one star today. We're not going to make any grunts just yet. We will make grunts as we need them. Um, stars have star power, which they have certain abilities, which um, is, you know, a big deal. Um, there are three advantages uh, that you have uh, the star power. You have extraordinary effort and free will. Star power um, means that you get, like, bonus D6s. Uh, st you start each encounter, which when we see page 75, with one D6 of star power for each point of rep that you have. Whenever a star takes damage, you can roll their current star power um, and read each D6 as rolled. We suggest rolling them one at a time. One to three, you reduce the damage by one level and the D6 is removed for the rest of the encounter, whether it is actually reduced damage or not. Asterisk, losing the D6 for the rest of the encounter is different to other THW rules. So in other systems, you don't lose that for the rest of the encounter, but in this case, we do. Or if you get a four, five, six, the damage stays and the D6 is retained. Example, a star with a rep five is hit by, hit by gunfire. He takes one, obviously dead, and one out of the fight result. Only the worst damage, obviously dead, is applied. Uh, the player rolls 1d6 per point of star rep or 5d6 in this case. Um, so you're only taking the worst damage because you're a star and then you reduce it. And the way it works is if it's obviously dead, it becomes out of the fight. If it's out of the fight, it becomes duck back. Duck back becomes carry on. Out of the fight result in a melee becomes minus one rep uh, and the lowest melee result, right? So it makes it... Basically, if you're a star... You get some privileges uh, where you don't have to worry. You know, the rules don't necessarily apply to you to kind of give you a bit of survivability. Uh, it's possible to reduce damage by multiple levels if you roll several rolls of one, two, three. You only count the worst possible damage when taking more than one. Damage does not stack. 
So we have to keep that in mind. Watch me make damage stack because I'm stupid and I forget that. Just remember that using star power during an encounter will uh, make you gain a decreasing rep D6. So what happens is as you're progressing, you get like, it's kind of like a tally. Like you, some when good things happen, you increase your rep D6. When bad things happen, you decrease. And then at the end of kind of like your session, whatever, you tally them all up, you add it all up. And um, then if you have more, like if you have, if it's neutral, you do nothing. If you have one or more increasing, you get a chance to increase. If you have one or more decreasing, then you might lose some rep, right? Um, and so you want to just be careful uh, with that. Um, and then this is going into the, you know, effort of uh, the example, right? You know, the results are when the guy rolls his 5d6, he gets 2, 2, 4, 4, 5, 6. Uh, 1, 2 reduces obviously dead result to an out of the fight roll and the 6 is discarded. The other 2 reduces out of the fight result uh, to a duck back and the d6 is discarded. The 4, 5, and 6 have no effect, but they are retained. So, you know, you don't lose them. If you don't get to the benefit of it, you don't use them. It's kind of like a save in 40k, except using it, like, is limited. Um, like, you know, if it succeeds, it wears away. Extraordinary effort. Extraordinary effort is something a star can do in difficult situations. Anytime the star rolls d6, they can choose extraordinary effort to roll a bonus d6. The star ross must roll one d6 on any table they choose and roll another d6 and add the result. This can be done before rolling the d6 or after they have rolled. The star is allowed only one extraordinary effort per encounter. So, you know, if you really feel like you need the boost, you can use... Uh, you know, that once per encounter and encounter thing. And then free will, you can choose to leave and or have your side leave the battle board uh, when taking the will to fight test before rolling the dice. So instead of having to read the result as whatever it comes up, if you decide, nah, man, we're just going to bail. This is too much for us. You can do that, which, uh, you know, very, very important there. Um, you got to choose a race. We're going to be a basic um, because that's me, man. I'm, I'm just basic. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Do stars always start with five? Do I remember seeing that? Yes. Stars, we suggest your star begin with a reputation of five. If desired, you can make enemies uh, or NPCs, stars or grunts, co-stars, if it enhances your story. Grunts, you roll for, you know, you roll for their stuff. Grunts, they're, they're like the NPCs. They're not your guys, uh, you know, and they may react in different ways uh, to what you have. Um, so let's start with our rep. D we're going to start with a five um, while we're there. We're a basic and we'll be a human uh, male. Basic male. That's me. Basic male. Rep of five. I don't know if I have a rep five. Definitely not. I'm a star. Let's put that down. Uh, we'll come back to names. I might have to generate a name. Uh, according to the Alien Studies Institute, the ASI located on Gaia Prime, Basic is common term for any being who is defined by the five major codes of life. Although there are humanoids uh, that may have the five major codes of life, in reality, the term basic applies to those humanoids that can't uh, that can trace their ancestry back to Gaia Prime. Gaia Prime being Earth, obviously. Uh, who qualifies for a basic status is a bone of contention in the Gaia Prime courts. But we digress. <laughs> you get the idea that you know, obviously, basics. Uh, you know have different uh, privileges in the Gaia government. Uh, basics come in a wide variety of shapes, sizes, and more importantly, temperament. It's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog is a relevant saying when it comes to basics. Don't underestimate basics by their size or gender as they can truly, uh, they are true loose cannons of the 5150 universe, which I think is pretty accurate for humans in general, right? Uh, on worlds where basics make up the bulk of the inhabitants, most majority of them consist of the working class Joes, which is what we're going to be. We're going to be a Joe. Uh, these people go about their day to day existence uh, with little more than the desire to eat, sleep, and procreate. Truly an ideal existence. However, there are other groups who define and separate basics. These groups range from those who protect and serve the greater good to those selfish individuals who forsaken their duty. Take heart and take hope knowing that the forces of Gaia, our mother, are at work to reform and remove those malcontents. Uh, gender. Oh, we're meant to roll for gender. Well, let's see. Uh, one to three, we are male. Four to six, we're female. Yeah, three, we're male. Uh, you also get a random attribute, uh, which is on page 17. Uh, need a rep for a basic roll of D6. Now, we, we're, we're starting with five because we're a star, but technically we should be a four. I have in the past run with the lower rating, um, and it can be a bit of a detriment. 
Um, but I think just for the sake of keeping things nice and simple, we'll start with a five. We get a row, uh, random attribute when we get to page 17. Let us not forget. Now let's skip ahead. All right. Classes. Uh, people work, I work, you work. These are the different classes. As I said, we're going to be a Joe. Uh, the vast majority of people who have ordinary jobs lead average lives, also known as the LWC, law-abiding working class. Using the professions list, go to the appropriate profession list, roll 2d6, add the results. Uh, the total will be the in front of the NPC you have met. Well, in this case, it'll be our actual thing. Now, Joes, we've got service Joes and we've got labor Joes. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to roll a d6. And uh, one to three will be a service Joe. Four, five, six will be a labor Joe. Here we go. It's a six. So we're a labor Joe. And uh, then we've got to roll our 2D, 2D thing. Now, obviously, you can choose this if you want, right? Uh, we got a 10. We're going to be in manufacturing. People who work in factories, machinists, etc. Um, so we're a manufacturer. Joe. Yeah, manufacturing Joe. Pretty straightforward. And then you can roll for your genders and stuff if you need to, but we've already done that. So, next. Attributes. Stars receive two attributes. Basics roll one random and choose a second. Non-basics use their race attribute and roll randomly for one. So, uh, we have... here yeah, roll 1d6. Read the result as rolled. Uh, so, you've got six tables... Oh, okay, so you've got table one, table two or three, table four or five, table six. So here's our first dice, our random attribute. We got a four, so that's this one down here. And then we roll another d6 to determine the actual attribute. It's one agile. It was almost a six, which would have been interesting, but there you go. I uh, don't like what your star rolled, don't use it. You only have one attribute. So there you go. Um, we are going to agile, so our first attribute we get a plus one rep for physical challenge. Plus one physical rep. All right, so that's our random one. Uh, so we can choose uh, one, but you know me, I, I don't like to choose. We're going to, um, we are going to roll again. So uh, on table two, and we are two, double two, cruel. We're cruel. Um, so that's interesting. I've never been a cruel person before. I'm playing a bad guy. Uh, count as plus one D six. When interacting with characters with an equal or lower rep. Cool. Well, there you go. I'm a big meanie, you know, to the people beneath me. And I guess that might be what's motivating me to want to, um, you know, get out of here. <laughs> Not be in manufacturing from now on. Uh, let's have a quick read of this stop box, which we should have done before we moved on to our things. Uh, you'll use six-sided dice, D6, in four ways. Uh, I roll 2d6 versus a rep 4 mover and shaker, score a 3 and 5. How many 6s did I pass? So the way this works is when you're rolling your dice... Um, whatever is under your rep. So if your rep four mover and score a three, well, it depends on what your thing. I'm guessing they mean like as a rep four mover. Um, so it's it's whatever is that number or less. So in this case, they've passed one, right? How many d6 did I pass? Uh, what does the result of three convert to when rolling a half d6? So one, two is a one, a three is a two. Stars have three advantages, star power, extraordinary effort, free will. We already looked at that. Um, you know, how do you lose your star power D6 uh, when you spend it, right? And if you spend it for your, um, you know, to not die and you succeed, if you spend it and you fail, you don't lose it. There are six major races. All races have attributes except, I'm guessing they mean the, the basic has not got that right. Uh, we've grouped similar professions into five classes, movers at the top, 
criminal element at the bottom, review the professions you need for specific jobs for your story. Yeah, cool. We, we don't need to do that. So we got our attributes. Happy days. Uh, reputation. Rep five. These are confident characters. Numerous successful encounters. Uh, well, we know what we are. Generating reps. If you have to generate rep for an NPC, uh, if it hasn't been done for you by the encounter, just use the race list. Yeah, well, we do that with the cards, right? Rep D6. Instead of using cash credits or gold pieces to track how well a character goes in his career, we use Rep D6. This is another complaint I have about this system. I love this system, but I just wish they would count, like, call rep. Like, you've got your rep that you roll, you know what I mean? And then you've got this, like, XP, basically, you know what I mean? I wish they called that something different. Uh, just because I, it feels to me, like, lifetime rep feels... Like, it feels like it, they're talking about the one thing. And the first time I played through, I got very confused. Um, so, you can increase when positive things happen, decrease Rep D6. Um, and so, you have to kind of keep a tally of when you get these increases and decreases um, as we go. And as you can see, you've got, like, stuff here uh, where you're meant to mark that down. Now, you might notice I'm writing with a Faber-Castell connector pen, um, you know, superior texter. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing that is I, I will, you know update these as we go it's easier to see if i write in pencil you won't be able to see so what happens is like uh you know it damage each opponent that you cause to go out of the fight obviously dead or captured you get a uh, increased rep d6 uh wages for successful jobs you'll get increases interaction when you have interacted with an npc positively you get that and miscellaneous there are lots of other reasons uh, but decreasing, maybe each band member at the start of the month, you have to pay like a, a cost for them. So that's a decrease. If you ever leave a band member behind, that's a decrease of three. That's heaps. Cut loose when you like have to fire someone. That's why I'm not doing any grunts just yet. I'm not getting grunts at the start. Because if you, every month you lose, like it costs you some to have them. And every, uh, if you have to fire them, then that's bad as well, right? Or if they get hurt, that's even more worse, right? So we're just going to hold off on that. Getting stuff, if you want to get better stuff, then you do that. If you have a home, monthly, it's the law level minus two is how many you lose. Interaction, when you've interacted with an NPC, it goes badly, you lose them. Uh, if you have to leave the battle board without you know, being successful, then that you lose two. Um, lots of various other reasons. If you have a spaceship, then there's monthly income. If there ever is any repairs to that spaceship, and then costs, you know, as well. Star power, if you've used your star power during your encounter. Sweet talk, if you get use additional uh, D6 when interacting with them for sweet talk. Then after that, and a vehicle monthly upkeep, right? So what if you can't play your monthly upkeep? If you end up with more decreasing D6 rep than increasing at the end of the month, it reduces your lifetime rep by that amount. Any equipment or ship that you have will gain the quality modifier of that level. So you can avoid this by getting your net monthly increasing, decreasing rep back to zero by cutting someone from your band or getting rid of your spaceship. It gets repoed. Uh, if you like taking risks, you can choose to skip out on your spaceship payments and maintenance bills and avoid decreasing your lifetime rep D6, but a warrant will be issued against you, uh, um, your staff for theft. So there you go. And then... Uh, it, when you get to that, you end up having, you know, that sort of stuff. Our goal in 5150 is to increase your fame and fortune, retire comfortably, lifetime rep D6 level. So as we do things, they increase, right? We, I guess we'll go through this a bit more when we're, when we're doing it. Let's look at our skills. We're still making our character. What attributes and traits and behaviors and skills are each learned? Hang on, wait. Are we meant to roll for what we have? Hang on. <coughs> no, that just tells you where you're up to. Excuse me. You only get a career of 10 years. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll remember that. Keep that in mind. Uh, all right. People, how you're interacting. Does it say how we get these skills? Well, attributes and traits. Oh, that's right. Here we go. So when you create your start, you can choose one of the skills to be equal to your rep and the other will be one point lower. So do we want to be a people person or do we want to be smart? Well, I think we're cruel. So I think the people person, maybe we're not very good at being a people person. So that will be a four and that will be a five. Um, that's how we're going to go with that one. Uh, just because, you know, we're cruel. If we hadn't rolled that cruel, I think we'd, we'd roll randomly anyway. Items. Uh, we believe gameplay thing is about bookkeeping is a chore. Uh, and so enter the use of items. It's assumed that your profession provides you with the necessities to live to your standard lodging, food, etc. Major purchases such as weapons, vehicles, spaceships are accounted by items. Basically, if you want a major person... Uh, purchase, 
you have it. Not a big deal. And if you win an encounter and you don't want to take an item from a figure you defeated, go for it, right? So if you beat someone and you take, like, you know, the gun or whatever, you can do that. Is it a game breaker? So they're very casual. They're like, whatever, man. What can you carry? How many items can your character carry? That depends on the item. Characters carry twice their rep in items, period. Here's how we do it. Character must decide what they're carrying before each encounter. If you carry a maximum number of items, you will have to give something up to add more if you get something during the encounter. Items that are used with one or two hands. Uh, items used with one hand count as one item for carrying purposes. If they use two hands, they count as two items. Special cases. There are some special cases where they don't fit in the hand, such as clothing, um, etc. So clothing, personal items don't, and don't count. Packs or duffel bags can hold items equal to the character's rep. The character, the pack or duffel bag will count as two items regardless of what item it is. And a briefcase can carry three one-handed items. The briefcase will count as one item. How do you lose items? Someone takes them from you, or you give it up freely, or the big one, you get killed and have to use cheating death. If you're dead, well, nothing left. You go through your pockets for loose change. Uh, if you're cheating death, roll 1d6 uh, for each item versus your rep, and then depending upon how many you pass, you get that. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's how we do it. Law, level, and restrictions apply, blah, blah, blah. I don't think we're going to have any... Um, I don't think we are going to have any armor, but we are definitely going to um, have some kind of a weapon, I think. Non-lethal melee. I think we would risk having, you know, we're in a sci-fi world, and I think we would risk having a shooting weapon. I think we're just going to get a P1 pistol, um, just so that we've got the most basic of basics. Uh, it fires one shot, bullet or laser, your choice, not necessarily the pistol. Could represent the civilian sporting rifle. Fire one target. Um, yeah. Yeah, basically it's one one shot a turn. Beams or bullets. I think we're just gonna take bullets again. There you go. Uh, you know, <laughs> let's keep it simple. Short and simple, nothing fancy. We're not going to have any armor to begin with. Um, UVB is a comlink. Uh, all races except the Hishin are considered to be using the UVB. And if it's really strange, you know, then they say telepathy to communicate. So that just kind of is built in. Um, but we'll put that in there, right? The universal voice box. Translator. We're not going to have any drones. We're not going to have any spacesuits. We're not going to have any enhancements. We're also not going to have any vehicles. We're going to take public transport. Um, and that the big reason for that, apart from being quite poor, is that we are um, going to be um, like that. That allows us to generate more encounters if we're on public transport, right? So that's a little secret between you and me. We want the more encounters so we can have lots of fun doing them. Now, uh, I don't know if you can see this because it's all the way in that little corner. I'm going to move over all my cards here. Uh, lifetime rep by D6. So let's see. Let's find out our lifetime rep by... We're a Joe, so we're going to roll 1D6 and then that'll tell us kind of where we start. So we're in the two categories, so we're, we're still 1 to 9.99, right? We're in the low end... Our lifetime rep is not good right now. <laughs> poverty. There you go. 1 to 99. Poverty. <laughs> so that's where we're up to. Um, yeah. Yay. For ease of play, we classify lifetime rep D6 level of the characters in the following way. And that's how you get famous. Home. We'll have like an apartment somewhere. Like, let's have a look, you know. In the 1 to 99 area. You know, we've got a basic weapon, so we're probably here you know, somewhere. Uh, does it say what kind of house you have? No, I thought it did. Everything's cheap. I'm guessing we're in like an apartment or something. We're not going to have any, um, any, any of this stuff. I think we would live in the sort of the downtown, not great area. If you have stuff, you can go crazy. Um, you know, if you have aug augments, which we're not having, uh, it's called metal ma mania. You know, what happens you go crazy? We're not going to have any psychic abilities. Maybe later we might pick up a, a friend who's psychic, and that could be a bit of a problem. Um, using psychic powers. Recruiting the band. We will come back to that at a later date. 
So like I said, we don't want to start with too many encumbrances on ourselves. Uh, and then, yeah, all that, that's it pretty much. All that is left is um, actually doing an encounter, which we'll do in a different video because I've already wasted so much of your time. Um, and I'm just looking for campaign map. Campaign map. Here we go. So... Um, you know what? This video is like quite lengthy already. We've got our character. We'll talk about our campaign in the next one. Sound good? See you then.